One very common and very serious misconception about cryonics comes out in the question, aren't your patients dead? Aren't you freezing dead people? Well, no, they're definitely not dead. Now, they may be called legally dead. In fact, we're not allowed to begin our procedures until legal death has been declared, but that has nothing to do with the underlying biological reality, nor is clinical death relevant. That's simply circulatory and respiratory arrest. That doesn't mean the cells are dead, doesn't mean the person has gone. Think about 50 years or so ago, if you were walking around and somebody dropped over in front of you, just keeled over, and you check for their breathing, there's no breathing, no pulse, we would have said, oh, that person's dead, and would have disposed of them. Today, what happens? We don't just give up on them. We start doing CPR, defibrillation, uh, administering epinephrine, various other things, and in many, many cases, they are restored to function. So were they dead? Not in any very interesting sense, perhaps in the trivial sense in which your battery is dead before you recharge it. But that's not the sense in which we're interested in. Cryonics patients are not dead because they are potentially recoverable. Legal death has nothing much to do with that. The only relevance to us is we're not allowed to begin our procedures under current law until someone has been declared legally dead. Legal death is declared immediately after clinical death. But really, that's just a doctor throwing his or her hands and saying, there's nothing more I can do for this person, given my knowledge and my skills and the level of technology. What we're doing is extending that emergency medicine and saying, let's stop things getting worse, take them into a future where we have more advanced capabilities and can restore them to full function. In the meantime, those people are not dead. They're in a kind of a third state. They're not really alive because they're not functioning. In fact, we've stopped all function by storing them at very low temperatures. They're sort of in a, an ametabolic coma, if you like. Someone in a deep coma is not responsive, but they do have biological activity. We're halting that biological activity as well. But they're not dead unless the structures that encode their memories and their personality is destroyed beyond recovery. By protecting them as we cool them down and by storing them at very low temperatures, we are ensuring that we preserve those structures so that one day they may be revived and repaired. To further illustrate how fuzzy the border is between life and death, and how our current concept of death is really incorrect. Consider cases like the 29-year-old Swedish woman who was trapped in ice for 80 minutes and was rescued and rewarmed and recovered with no damage whatsoever, no neurological deficits. That's 80 minutes, that's a considerable period of time. And that's not even the record. There are other cases, usually involving small children because their bodies tend to cool faster, uh, who survived maybe a couple of hours at very low temperatures. There are also cases of animals that have been restored from clinical death of three hours when they've been kept near the freezing point, just above freezing. So that's very much like what we do in our procedures to cool the body temperature as rapidly as possible, slow down metabolism. That gives the, the body a lot more time uh, for us to repair and revive it. I'm Max Moore. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, share it with your friends, and visit the Alcor website.